welcome President, Windows and Windows Live Division, Microsoft, Stephen Sinofsky. Well, good morning, everybody. We are pretty excited to be here today. Wait, this is Microsoft. We are super excited to be here today. I would like to welcome everybody to Windows 8. So today we're gonna to talk about Windows 8, and it, it's, it's a launch. What we're launching today is we're launching a new opportunity for developers, a new opportunity for you to express yourself and to get the most out of PCs, no matter what size or shape. And so we're gonna talk about a lot of new things today about Windows 8. And we really couldn't be more excited to share that with you, to share it with everybody who's listening in on the webcast, and even some of the folks on the Windows team all around Microsoft. So let's just go ahead and, and get started. I wanna get started by talking a little bit about Windows 7. It was three years ago um, at this conference that we, we unveiled Windows 7, with our first developer preview of, of that product. And we've come a long way since then. And we're very excited to share that we are approaching over 450 million copies of Windows 7 sold. But, but wait, it actually gets better because today, actually sort of like Friday at like noon, I can share with you that uh, Windows 7 consumer usage is finally greater than Windows XP usage. You know, when we talk about improving our products along the way and, and responding to the needs of the customers in the marketplace, and one of the things that's very exciting about how we've managed uh, to, to improve Windows 7 over that time is, you know, we've delivered over 1,500 product changes to Windows 7 since we released it to manufacturing. And so those are not security updates. Those are just things that, that added small things, that fixed features that you said weren't quite right, and also addressed some of the, the challenges in the product. But over 1,500 product changes since we RTM. Also since uh, we RTM Windows 7, we released Internet Explorer 9. And so we're excited to, to have reached a point where we're in Explorer, Internet Explorer 9 is the fastest growing Windows 7 web browser. And it really brought a, a whole new dimension to browsing and the whole idea of hardware acceleration and that the device you use and the hardware that it has and the operating system you run on do matter to web browsing. And so all those fish swimming around really fast make a huge difference in everyday browsing. And we also are pleased to share that we have over 542 million people using our Windows Live services. So whether it's Hotmail or Messenger, SkyDrive, or signing on with Live ID, half a billion people every single month use Windows Live. And so with Internet Explorer 9 and Windows Live, we're, we're talking about some foundational elements of what will become Windows 8. And so we want to start by talking about, about talk, start talking about Windows 8 by talking a little bit about this changing world of computing. Things are a lot different than they were three years ago with computing. And they're a lot, lot different than they were in, say, 1995, the, the last time Windows underwent a pretty significant and bold overhaul. So, you know, first, uh, form factors and user interaction models create a whole new set of scenarios and opportunities for you. I mean, it, it's incredible to think about the evolution of, of desktops to laptops to convertibles to now small slate computers, or, or as we call them, Windows tablets. These form factors really have changed the way that the types of software that you can write and the solutions that you can deliver to customers. I mean, it's just incredibly exciting that, uh, what we can do. You know, touch is, is unbelievable. So, you know, we, we talk a lot about touch. We, we did touch in Windows 7. We probably thought that there's, there were other things that we could do. And so we've really um, pushed a lot on the ways that we can deliver touch to you. You know, and I think touch is going to become a, a huge part of interaction. And what we're going to see is, is something that I don't think a lot of people are expecting, which is as soon as you've used touch on a PC, you want touch on all your PCs. Those people who say touch is only for small devices or it's only for lightweight things, I promise you, the minute you use a touch device with Windows 8, by the time you go back to your laptop, your desktop, you're going to be hitting that screen. And I promise you'll have fingerprints all over your monitor if it doesn't support touch. You know, mobility is a whole new dimension to computing these days. 
It used to be that it was enough to be able to just carry your laptop around, put it down, plug it in, and use it. But now you want devices that you can use while you're carrying them around, or just seated kind of uncomfortably or recline. And so a whole new way of, of using computing has, has really arisen, and we want Windows to respond to that. You know, you guys want a much richer connectivity and sharing between applications. The idea that applications are silos and don't talk to each other or talk to each other through very narrow interfaces, that's just not a rich enough interaction model for customers. They want much more of a, they don't want their apps to stand alone, they want a, a web of applications. And we also know that, that you want a stronger connection to your customers, that you want to be able to reach all the customers that are Windows. And with Windows 8, you'll be able to reach everybody that has a Windows PC. With, with our product and sell them, offer them, provide them the software that you write, that you learn about here today. And we also learned that, that the world is different because soft services are an intrinsic part of the software that everybody uses. You just don't write an app anymore if it doesn't connect to some web backend, doesn't share information or consume information from, from a service. And so it's very important that, the, that we recognize this as we go and evolve Windows 8. So what is Windows 8? Well, it's going to be hard to sum it up now. We're at a developer preview stage. But I want everybody to think about two important elements of, of Windows 8. First, everything that was great about Windows 7, well, we took that and we made it even better in Windows 8. So if you've got a Windows 7 PC, everything that runs on that Windows 7 PC is going to run on that Windows 8 PC. And so we've got a huge base of, of support and an amazing body to, of success upon which to build. And Windows 8 builds on all of that. And that's one of the things that we mean by a no compromise solution. You get to build on all of that success of, of Windows 7 as you move forward with, with Windows 8. And that was a very bold thing that we, cho we chose to do. We didn't abandon the, the success of Windows 8 and all of that work, those professional applications, those entertainment applications, all of that work, an integral part of, the, of Windows 8. And then we did something that we took a step back and we said, what's the, the boldest thing we could say? And what we said is, we're going to reimagine Windows. From the, from the chipset to the experience, Windows 8 reimagines what Windows can be. And we mean so many things by that. And you're going to hear that word a lot. Um, what, we, what we really want to talk about today is how from the chipset, and we mean the work that we've done on Windows for ARM, all the way up through a brand new user, exp user experience that's touch first, but equally at home with a mouse and a keyboard. We have a new range of capabilities, scenarios, form factors, all enabled by this bold reimagination of, of Windows 8. And you know what, what we mean, like, let's look at, at, the, at the world of working on ARM. You know, the role of an operating system is to help you, the software developers, do two things. First, to abstract out the hardware and peripherals that are connected to your, your software so that you can write software and express your creativity and work on a broad range of hardware. But then, when you want to get access to that hardware, to the unique capabilities that the world of hardware bring, Windows' job is to let that all surface and to let that shine through so that you can build unique solutions for unique hardware. So Windows 8 takes that bold step and reimagines the kinds of hardware that Windows can work on, but at the same time allows you to take advantage of all of that unique hardware. And so we're going to talk a lot about all the, the role of hardware and user experience, but I do want everybody to know that the demos that we're showing you today are equally at home on, on ARM and on x86. And so we're very excited in the progress that we've made. And we have a whole row of machines that we're going to, we're going to show you as we progress throughout the day. Now, what are we going to do to show off reimagining Windows? Well, we think that the best way to do that is to let the product shine. Now, we are at the developer preview stage, but that means the product has a lot of features to show. So we're going to do four big demonstrations for you today. First, we're going to show off the Windows 8 experience and how we reimagined the way that you could interact with a PC from the very basics of starting programs, switching programs, and running applications. And then we're going to show you how to build these incredibly cool, what we call Metro-style applications. They're full screen, they're immersive, they're touch-centric. And we're going to show you how to build those from the ground up using world-class development tools. And then we're going to show you the hardware platform that all of this runs on. And we're going to show you the incredible range of form factors and the incredible range of hardware that you can run on, or hardware peripherals and devices you can run on. And then we're going to show you how that all connects up to cloud-based services with Windows Live and how Windows Live can become an integral part of your Windows 8 computing experience. 
I'm gonna bring this all to you in a series of demonstrations, but that's gonna only scratch the surface of Windows 8. It's a bold product. We have over 100 sessions here today, and this afternoon we're gonna do these big picture sessions where each one of these topics gets a really deep dive from the architects of that area, and we're just gonna spend a lot of time really introducing you to a reimagined Windows. So I wanna start off with the, with the Windows 8 experience, but before I do that, I know something is on everybody's mind. They're like, you guys, you're gonna add a bunch of code, and then Windows is gonna get bigger, and it's gonna get slower, and you're gonna layer all this on top, and you're gonna lose sight of fundamentals. And so, you know what, we didn't. I, I promise you, we did not lose sight of fundamentals. Some of you might remember a machine that I held up three years ago. Um, it's, a, it's one of these netbooks. Does everybody remember those? Uh, this is uh, this, this machine I held up uh, quite a while ago, and it's a, a Lenovo that was one of the first generation netbooks, and it has one gigabyte of memory, an Atom-based processor, and you know, it was very cool. This machine has been around the world. I used it as my primary machine for about two years. And so uh, it's actually running Windows 8, and it's uh, running Windows 8 in a pretty cool way. And so let me show you how well it's running Windows 8. This is that very same machine running Windows 7 SP1. Um, it, it's, this is Task Manager, Windows 7 SP1, and you see it's got, it's using about 404 megabytes of the Windows, of the one gigabyte of memory. Windows 7 SP1 it also has about 32 processes running. This is Windows 8 today. It has, it uses only 281 megabytes of memory. it dropped three processes in the process of doing that. What does that really tell you? Well, when we showed up and showed you the Windows 7 preview release, I said that about half the memory was free. Turns out it was about 540 megs of memory were used, and there were about 34 processes. By the time we got to Windows 7 SP1, those 1,500 changes path to RTM yielded about 404 megabytes of memory consumed out of one gigabyte and 32 processes. So with Windows 8 today, 281 meg consumed, leaving almost three quarters of one, of one gigabyte of memory free for you to use with your applications and your software, but don't each one of you use it all. And then 29 processes. And so that's quite an accomplishment, and we are very, very focused on the fundamentals of, of Windows 8. You will hear lots about that as this week progressive and there, progresses, and there are a lot of sessions about that. But it's super important to understand that everything we're showing you today is built into Windows. It is Windows. We're not building layers on layers. We've built everything natively into Windows.